This is the Cowboys Game You Get podcast. I'm Bragg. I'm here with Ben. Hey, how's it going? From Nolan TCG, as always. Yes. Uh, you've been a regular guest this year. It's been pretty damn good. It's been pretty good it's, having you around. It's been fun. It's been very fun. And Actually, we hit, hmm? getting, getting to record these in person when we're not in lockdown is great. <laughs> Even yeah. though now we're on Discord again. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. ending it how we kind of began it. But we'll see what happens with the full end of year podcast. It might actually have to be a Discord one, but we'll make that call when we get there. But for the moment, we have the top five products Ooh. of the year 2020. Uh, a few memorable sets this year, all things considered. Like, when I sat down to look at this, I was like, oh, there's like one or two good sets. And then I was like, wait, no, that was good. Oh, wait, that was good as well. Oh, yeah. no, this was good. <laughs> like, all the main sets had, like, some kind of good staple to chase. Like, even yeah. the bad set in January still had Lightning Storm. Oh, my God, I forgot about the January set. Yeah, there's, like, every set had something to get, which was bad for my wallet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, this is the this is the most products we've ever voted for as well. Um, like it, diverse, as in like um, yeah, the most yeah. people nominated stuff. Yeah, then yeah, we did have the more the most people voting, so that's probably something to okay. do with it. But yeah, it, it, we all coalesced around the other tops for decks and cards, so it, it's nice to see a bit of range here. But let's get right into the top five. At number five, we had the Shadol Showdown Structure Deck. Okay, I forgot about that when I was like going through my list, and I was like, no, that Structure Deck was awesome. I think I bought like nine of them. Oh. I don't normally buy that many Structure Decks. Uh, was that for sealed only? No, I had like three for personal use, three for sealed only, and then I bought another three because I needed some stuff out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, it was really good. Like I bought it on the way to Pokemon Oceanics. Oh, it was that good. I saw the list and went, oh, I kind of want to pick them up before I lose track of them and forget. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was a, it was had a lot of good stuff in it. Let's actually double check that. I probably should have bought the products up that we're going to talk about. <laughs> Started the trend as well of having like extra foils instead of just like the basic five. Yeah. You ended yeah, cool. up with a whole bunch of nice stuff. Alter Arts as well in the structure decks. Also, Wendy was really good support for that deck. It's really makes, good. Makes makes you feel good. I'm again night. Oh, that's right. Super Oh yeah, that that Super Poly reprint was perfect timing. So many staples. Living Fossil actually. I wonder if we didn't get that Living Fossil reprint. What would have happened later that in the year? Would have been very expensive. Yeah, it would have been big money the moment everyone was chasing it. Yeah, like uh, actually, the quite the opposite. Uh, for number four, we have Gold Series uh, Maximum Gold. See, I didn't rate this at all. I did yeah. not rate Maximum Gold. I hated it. I think this is big for a... This was big in a few people's opinions to give them... That gave them staples that they didn't actually have access to. I guess we did have a very developing locals this year where we, like, emerged from having, like, 8 to 10 players to being 20 players every week and everyone playing meta. Yeah. It's, um... Uh, that The alt arts, though, were a bit of a disappointment, but for the most part... But that's just in my opinion. Like, for the most part, I think these hit a few people... In good ways. Ah, oh, the Nibiru reprint was probably like was big as well. Last year's number was, one card finally gets a reprint. The also the fact that like the set didn't hold any value, and that's no. that was probably something that I found quite concerning. Where everything just tanked immediately, and it's like, oh, all this stuff's worthless. <laughs> yeah, I I was shocked to see that. Uh, I thought it would at least maintain like a a thirty to fifty dollar val like uh, value, like the. Uh, Actually, uh, Duelist Overload didn't make the t uh, didn't make the cut, okay. but um, it I, I thought it'd be like that where they maintain their values like they were. There wasn't any short prints, right? There are uh, the blue eyes was the blue uh, eyes and the red yeah. eyes, I think. But they made wait, but they maintained their values, didn't they? They did, yes. Yeah, they so, were the two cards that are valuable now. Yeah, how about that? Short prints maintaining values. Who would have thunk it? Who would have guessed? <laughs> One thing that didn't maintain its value was Golden Lord. I, yeah. I, I paid like 25 Australian on them and I was like, man, I got a great deal. And by the time they came, they were like $9. It, like, what? Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it's just so... <sighs> Look, 
and that's probably why I have a I didn't vote for this and just it's my own personal bias that reprint un unsignaled out of nowhere well not out of nowhere it's a gold like it's a golden lord in the gold series I guess it makes sense but still <laughs> like after the Cosmo Dark Destroyer incident I didn't want this again and it happened again so here we are yeah. here we are it's patterns yeah well Actually, and that's, and that's the crazy thing, because usually my, uh, so, if a set comes out in May, that's when I'll buy in, because I know that I'm probably going to be chasing stuff in January for our YCS, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'd rather get, I'd rather get it then, then later, and that's why I picked them up, no questions asked for whatever they were at the time. See, um, I used to be like that, until they changed, like, the way, um, like, the Megatins were structured, where now no yep. longer was the January set in the Megatins, and I was like, oh, cool. I guess this year I buy Lightning Storms. Yeah, yeah. I, I probably would have bought the January set if uh, I was so... F like, if I was so set on Lightning Storms, I wasn't... I was more keen on Evilly matches uh, this year. Okay. Still pulled a Lightning Storm, but what do you do? Uh, and speaking of, yeah, Ignition Assault did not make the cut. Sorry. Yeah, that's no surprise. That was a one-card set. <laughs> yeah. And on the number three, we have Eternity Code. A solid set. Very solid set. Everything in that could be value in another set. Like, if you pull, like, ah. any of those top five cards and put them into Ignition Assault, it's, it's like, a $50 card. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, you voted for this uh, as number one, didn't you? Yeah, I believe I did. Uh, so, besides the Starlight Rare uh, Valor being kind of crazy, uh, Moonlit Chill's going to be a, a long-term thing. It gave... Gears, it gave us Gearsu, and what, like, so, January, I, I'm pretty sure on the podcast, I'm like, is gonna be the, the main card of this set. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, Literally, oh, it was. It was. And then, poor Orcus didn't really do anything, as we covered in the decks. No, oh, it did nothing. <laughs> yeah, I guess they really did need Harp. They needed I mean, Harp. It's... And they needed Rusty. They got Rusty, still needed Harp. <laughs> Uh, outside of that, access code is uh, huge. I voted it in my top three cards. Oh, okay. But, um, but and that's it. But even though it didn't make anyone else's top cards of the of the year, it was still a really good card that definitely boosts the value of this set. Where if you're chasing anything else in the set and you pull a access code, you go, oh, I'll take that. <laughs> that's when I opened my second box. I opened it and got one secret, but it was access Ugh. code. So I was like, I don't really care. Yeah, it's like, oh. But I, uh, I did flag the whole, uh, once you pull one secret, there's automatically a starlight, so Tom went and bought the starlight, uh, went and bought the box and pulled the starlight immediately, and I was like, oh, cool. Yeah. Thanks. That's the way it goes. <laughs> uh, the Plunder Patrol support in this set was pretty good as well, from what I remember. That was, that yeah, was cute. The fusion giving them that, like, finally giving them kind of an end board-ish way to play. The invoke also, support as well was really good. Yeah, yeah. That's a super. If that was a secret rare, how yeah. expensive would that card be? Yeah. Like, oh, this yeah. is so stacked. I. And this isn't. Is this the. Let's go through the ultra rares. Because my brain are. Yeah, this has Link Cross. There we go. Yeah, it seals the deal. <laughs> the card Where... banned before being played at a major event. Yeah, that poor. Actually, 6 I only got limited before being played. Uh, and then also even on the common side, Parallel Exceed as well is like a lot, like a yeah. few good comments out here. Another crazy card just to just be thrown in this set. Oh yeah. Ah, uh, moving on to number two. Secret Slayers! What do you say? Two, two meta decks and a, a plant deck. <laughs> two meta decks that... Again, we'll never really get a chance to shine in a major event. The best yeah. deck to never win a YCS will be at Emancipator. Yeah, yeah. Like, that it, our number so one. Uh, I'm surprised this wasn't number one. Uh, the place better reprint in this in this set as well is actually was really well timed. It would have been pretty annoying to dig up those other play spreaders. The thing is, like, with this set, like, even for us, it dropped at a real awkward time where we were in lockdown for probably three weeks to yeah. a month. And, like, when we hit lockdown was right when the set dropped and it was like, oh, cool. Uh, we don't have any way to prove that this stuff is good. And it just sat yeah. on shelves. 
Yeah. Well, I still rated Golden Lord and the other short prints. I, that's, that's the other thing as well, is the... Uh, them short printing uh, Cursed Eldland was, in the oh, end, yeah. kind of crazy, because now there's going to be demand to, for that reprint soon. Yeah, I need, a, I need a third one. I'm sitting here with two. It's like, ooh, I don't want to pay $20 yeah. for a, a super in an all super set. It was pretty nice, because like, every time I opened a pack that had it in it, I would go to whoever I was with, like a workmate or um, a Brit, and go, ah, paid for the pack. And now it's ooh, paid for definitely, the definitely paid. The <laughs> yeah. Then he, and also I didn't pull Golden Lord. I bought him, so I guess I gotta make it back somewhere, right? This this yeah, set yeah. was just really fun to open because also like I wasn't set, I didn't want to play a man at Emancipator, but also having a researcher around um, definitely I'm, helped it. Blo I got was, those at a steal, absolute steal. Yeah. Like. I got them just to play Gem Knights because I wanted to play my Gem Knight FTK again. And then it turned out Adam Speed mm. was crazy and it's like, oh, cool. This stuff was supposed to be bad. Now it's it's broken. I win. Yeah. Uh, reprinting all the Kawaki, uh rock stuff just to get it all in one place was really like a really well thought out idea. Giving everyone access to Solemn Judgment, Galaxy Cyclone, Cyclone uh, Upstart Goblin. Like, there's just yeah. so much in this set that's just really good. Sure, you got Those Pyramid of Wonders and fucking... Goblins. So good. Yeah, like, it's Uni it's... Zombie. I... What was Having the, like, yeah, and, staple and... access to all this stuff, just like being there in foil prints, is just so good. Yeah. Uh, Block Dragon as well. Like, just the... They could have easily left Block Dragon out and made everyone go dig up old ones or, like... It... It's a nice... It was a nice time. It was a good set. I wouldn't have complained about that because I still have, like, a whole bunch of Ultra Block Dragons was just sitting on them. I mean, like, this card will be good one day. Oh, it's good, but they reprinted it. <laughs> uh, into, uh... Into... Before we get to number one, we have some uh, sh uh, notable mentions. Uh, so, tied on five points, uh, on five votes, we have Phantom Rage and oh. Toon Chaos... <laughs> One of okay. those is not like the other. Yeah. <laughs> I'm whatever, very... Whatever, whatever I, you want to go with, I guess. I, I voted Toon Chaos uh, pretty highly myself. Just uh, a lot of accessible staples in there and the new collector's rarities. And also Infer uh, Infernobles being in there yeah. too. Like I, The fact that there should have been a structure deck still is like, you know, screw us. Yeah. Um, no, no structure decks. No structure decks. We've got to fi actually. We've got to figure out what one they're going to skip next year because we. Uh, it's already happened. Um, they've already. It's the Dragoonity one. We're skipping the Dragoonity. We're structure skipping deck. Dragoonity. There we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, is so that what they're putting? In, is that what they're putting in the March set? It's in March set. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They skipped Dragoonity. And we're getting the Ice Barrier one. Well, at least we're not waiting till end of April. <laughs> I, I guess. Sure. <laughs> Always look on the bright. Um, but yeah. So. Yeah, a set that had introduced a new rarity that looks cool and is extremely chased and holds its value. And then and they immediately killed it in the next set. <laughs> yeah. it Also, this set being short printed, like, a set that was sold out everywhere and had such high demand didn't make anyone's top five is kind of crazy to me. But I guess it wasn't as playable or as accessible as the rest of the set, so I guess that's why people didn't vote for him. It was one of the sets where I had, like, a lot of casual people just coming into work and being like, hey, I need Toon Chaos, and it's like, I've never seen you in my life before, why are you buying Yu-Gi-Oh products? <laughs> and the other... Also, it not having Toon Kingdom's kind of dog shit. <laughs> Complete. But we got the old theory print in the end, so I don't care. Yeah. Uh, we did. We did. And... Last, but not least, number one, Rise of the Duelist. I, I still put Eternity Code above Rise of the Duelist. Like, Rise of the Duelist has some very good stuff in it, but I feel like Eternity Code just has more. I, yeah, I feel that too, but I, we have a lot of people that sway towards a Dogmatica engine. Uh, like the, your entire locals? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Seven and Deer as well. Uh, the Synchro stuff in that arc, uh, da, 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 Chaos, Chaos Synchro, like, I still think is a really good 
card going forward. Oh, that uh, card is broken. Yeah, uh, we get the we got that rank five that was meant to be used in Zodiac, but they're kind of ignoring it at the moment. There's no real point to like play it because it's just like Borbo attack directly anyway. Uh, Dogma Act Punishment. Uh, so with that, one of the, one of the best control cards in the game. Is just, just a, a common. common. Yeah, just a common. <laughs> That's just well, it's a common, it's fine. We don't we don't need it to be super or foil in any way. Schism's in there, real good. Tidying, this, real good. Tidying is insane. Tidying should be a secret rare. Tidying is the best card in the set. Ice Dragon Prison. <laughs> <laughs> no, tidying's better than Ice Dragon's Prison. Oh, what a call, what a call. Uh and who could forget DD Dog? <laughs> oh, that card made DD's meta again. Bring back uh, 2004. And uh, Diddy Crow being the secret... Uh, the Starlight, sorry, was real strange. Oh, yeah, Tactics like, is in this! Tactics yeah, and Blizzards! Yeah, Tactics is in this. Um, yeah. uh, like, the fact that Diddy Crow, they put it in there as a, as a Starlight, made it seem like they were just going to be printing like staple hand traps for the next god knows how long. And then all of a sudden, next set, it's like, oh, we forgot about a heater, here's heater. It's like, where's, where's my maxi? <laughs> Give me my Starlight Maxi. The, um... Where are you down for... Uh, uh, Titan Cloud Sick. Oh, I mean, you and me disagree on this, but I think Albaz for future is cute. This like, hmm? the card is fine. It's just... They need a reason to actually use it. <laughs> but, uh, uh, this also This set also rounded out the Infernobles. Uh... Very, okay, a really good set. I still think Eternity Code, maybe, but now, actually, as I'm going through it, it had all of our... Which was uh, Lachlan's top pick of the... No, oh, god damn it. <laughs> uh, how about... Like, I love how hyped the Gear Freed stuff was in the Catapult Turtle. We never got around to it. And... He, uh... He got a shout-out on the last... Uh, on the top cards of the years, and he's going to get a shout-out here. Melfi Rabby. Melfi Rabby. <laughs> Melfi best deck? Oh, wait, no, this isn't my channel. <laughs> On that note, to see that uh, to see that uh, thrilling Melfi content, hit up Nolan TCG in the description below. Yeah, uh, you want to go to every comment section where you will see Melfi Best Deck written in all caps. <laughs> <laughs> and otherwise, uh, join us. Uh, hopefully, so when's this going to come out? This is going to come out probably the same day as the end of year review special, if it happens, how it happens. We'll figure it out. Um, and I'll leave our thank yous and all that till then. Uh, thank you for joining me, Ben. That's absolutely no problem. Thank you for having me on. See ya. See ya.